I really need a light now that we're sometimes doing only that camera. Oh. Martin made fun of me. He was like, I can tell when you're not in the zone yet. And I was oh. like, what do you mean? And he was like, you look at the camera more awkwardly while you're trying to get into it. Remember, he's a mimic. Yeah. And I always forget that. I think sometimes you're like, oh, Martin's a boy, so therefore he must be dumb. <laughs> and then he comes in with like astute observations yeah. and stuff. And because remember, he said that all of your favorite movies of the year were cute and you liked it. <laughs> I stand by it. <laughs> I stand by it. I liked them all and I thought they were cute. Hi, Martin. Hi. <laughs> it just stays in. <laughs> I should play that voicemail. I saved the voicemail of him that one time. Which? He like left this voicemail and he was like, you better be recording or else I'll have to call you back again <laughs> later. <laughs> Look at the camera as awkwardly as possible while you get into the zone. <laughs> Don't do it like a little girl from Orphan. <laughs> That's what she looked like. I was going for Cindy Lou Who. Oh, okay. I mean. Or the Grinch. I don't know. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Will. And I'm Kristen. And this is So I'm Watching the Show, your twice weekly pop culture podcast where we talk about movies, TV, music, and more. As always, this is a spoiler show, but we will ease into them for this one. It's yeah. still relatively new. On today's episode, we are going to catch up. We're, we're doing a thing where we're sort of filling in a little bit of the 2019, probably even 2018, 2017. Oh. Um, we're in a bit of a dead zone content Well, this was from wise. 2020. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> we don't know what year it is. It's still early. <laughs> it's still January. We're in a little bit of a dead zone content-wise, so we're going back to some of the things that we wanted to get to and just didn't mm -hmm. and give things their due. Uh, so Plus, today, it works right nice into my New Year's resolution. My, going in your gaps. My letterbox list. How how how's that working? So I've actually watched. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've like, <laughs> watched six movies that are okay. on my list, so I feel okay about it. We have not yet broached the seventies, <laughs> which is a little bit of a bummer, but we'll get there. So I do not remember if I said it, but today we are watching the twenty twenty. Oh God, what it had like seven words in front of it: <laughs> adventure, romance, comedy, action. This just says monster adventure film. Yeah. So for once, Wikipedia is like to the point. IMDb says action adventure comedy. Mm -hmm. Uh, adventure film Love and Monsters, starring Dylan O'Brien. <gasps> the day of the monster uprising was the day I lost everyone. I'm gonna come find you. You made it all this way for a girl, huh? You don't know a thing about survival. Hurts my feelings. I play Tom Cruise. So, for the sake of clarity, the premise is seven years after the monster apocalypse, Joel Dawson, along with the rest of humanity, has been living underground ever since giant creatures took control of the land. After reconnecting over the radio with his high school girlfriend, Amy, who is now 80 miles away at a coastal colony, Joel begins to fall for her again. As Joel realizes there is nothing left for him underground, he decides to venture out to Amy, despite the dangerous monsters that stand in his way. That is already more than I knew about this movie. Okay. Going in? Yeah. Going in, I knew it had a snazzy poster that caught my eye. Yeah. The mixture of colors and shapes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a little bit of a stickler for movie posters. I, like, like, I have a thing that I like and that I respond to. Oh, okay. And sure. I'm not big on the minimalist. I know that you and like Will the, really like them. Well, I mean, it depends. I don't mm -hmm. always want a minimalist poster. Some movies deserve a minimalist poster. But we, I really also liked the Thor Ragnarok poster. <laughs> Thought it was really good. But well, it was also a little bit different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that was not happening. Because the, the I mean, thing the I like, young woman poster. I love that. But both those posters, well, it's like all of them. But yeah. the thing that I like about the Love and Monsters poster is that it both felt like old timey and fresh because mm -hmm. it, it sort of the montage collage, which love. I, I'm such a don't mess with the classic. Timeless. Yeah. Uh, but I got Dylan O'Brien. Uh, there was a cute dog. And I was like, I think there are literal monsters in this. So I was kind of into it, and it just sort of kind of came and went. Do you think in a regular year this would have been a bigger release? Or was this I destined mean, to fly under the radar? It would have gone in a theater. I well, don't it did. Know, I don't know that it would have been a bigger release. I think we would have seen it in the theater, and mm -hmm. it would have been one of those movies, which I think it's going to turn into anyway, where we're like, I can't believe everybody didn't see this. It's so fun, and like, blah, blah, blah. And I just... Well, because I think it would have done really disappointing box office numbers. 
You know well, what I mean? Yeah, we'll we'll get there. Uh, and then you guys watched it, and it was on your year end list. It was. And that yeah. sort of put some hitch in my giddy up yeah. to. It was cute, and I liked it. <laughs> we love you, Martin. <laughs> And I remember asking you if I would like it, and you were it, it, it's it's really weird because it's like you were kind of like, oh, and I was like, huh? I was like, will I like this or not? And I think it was the kind of thing where you do it sometimes, where you're like, I think you will, but then every so often there's something that you think I'll like yeah. that I don't. So it's like you're really over analyzing. Well, it's also <laughs> like I know that sometimes if you are enjoying a movie and one thing happens, it can ruin the whole thing for you. And so it's like sometimes. Yeah. So I just am like, overall, it's great. There's a couple moments you might not love. <laughs> and so but I don't I can't gauge oh God. I mean, we've been friends for 20 years, I should know, but you're so hot and cold on stuff that i think you should love i really think i'm not but you are there are a couple like outliers yeah. but so i fucking loved this movie it was so good was it from cute? the yeah <laughs> that's actually what i no, like yeah. what i liked about it <laughs> from the word go because mm-hmm. we like i i got like 17 minutes in and i'm like i'm buying this yeah. like mm-hmm. this is going in my in my thing it's going with final girls yeah and you know midnight special sure. and all of those i mean from the word go from his narration explaining what happened and i mean yeah obviously i'm a big dylan o'brien fan but we both are yeah but but i also was not like a fanatic or anything like i wasn't like oh my god I have, like i didn't see that that spy movie or assassin movie that he was in <laughs> i did it was pretty good actually it was like decent and it's uh michael keaton it's mm. pretty good it's pretty good i love how he went through like eight seasons of teen wolf refusing to take his shirt off and then every subsequent yeah. thing he's been in has been like well, isn't it that he's, he's not buff well he's not buff but he's not like it's not like he has no muscle he's pretty he's actually pretty buff for his like stature in the assassin movie mm-hmm. but is it not that he's like a little bit like embarrassed of his weird little chest hair right in the middle oh maybe but literally every other thing he's been i mean new girl he did it so it's like i think he didn't do it in those maze runner movies <laughs> it's just like right. teen wolf i don't know but teen wolf was beefcake so i can see not like yeah putting yourself styles out there. also isn't like styles <laughs> on teen wolf is not the like beefcake i just role. think it's funny because there's literally a scene in the movie where he's like take off your shirt and i was like <laughs> <laughs> but no, what pulled me in immediately was that this movie was fun yeah. from the get-go. Mm-hmm. And we're introduced to him in his colony. And like I said, we get the little preamble where he's explaining mm-hmm. how the world got to this place. Uh, and then there are deliberate questions that are like that I had that are not answered until they are organically answered later, which is the right choice. And it yeah. it 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 brings it in, it brings you in enough and then leaves things for you to you know catch up with along the way yeah but i could just tell immediately that the people liked each other and liked him yeah and i was in from that moment the fact that he is not a black sheep in Uh the colony it it does so from that moment i was like this is already a different perspective i am sick to death of same (laughs) the walking dead oh we don't want to see it that's the other thing too is like <laughs> I like minor spoiler, but he like does not encounter another human that doesn't help him. <laughs> Nobody is actively rooting against one another in this, and it's like, you're right. I don't think I don't think I realized that that is part of what I was responding to so strongly when we watched it the first time. But it's like it was just a bunch of people who genuinely liked each other and were trying to help each other survive as best as they could. And it's just so goddamn refreshing. And you, because you were like, not only was he not a black sheep. Yeah, he was legitimately helpful. Because they, they could have just put up with him. Yeah. But there was this sense that they actually Liked loved him. him. Yeah. And you it know what he comes kind of in is? more towards the end. It but... definitely does. It kind of is the um, Matt Damon and the Martian vibe mm-hmm. because it's more... It's more elaborated on in the book, but like he was chosen Spoilers for, for I guess the Martian. Kind of for yeah. the Martian. I'm not spoiling any plot points, but it's like he, Matt Damon's character, was chosen for that mission specifically because of his personality. The fact that he has a PhD in botany is like an extra bump, but it was like he was there to 
like band the team together. Which I think you need. Which which was always you know, to make this about me. <laughs> uh, I've played that game where I've wondered, sure. you know, in what reality could I survive mm. this situation, that situation? Sure. Like we were we were watching Black Sails, and I yeah. was like, okay. I'd work at the brothel. Sure. You know what I mean? Like I could yeah. totally cook. I could sew. Yeah. I could. And so I'm very much in that place where I was like when they when they established that he was cooking, it's mm-hmm. like you need that. 100%. And also you need someone that everybody likes. Yeah. You need a mediator. Yeah. You need a therapist. Mm-hmm. Like because I've talked about this before, but it's like I at, at various points in my life have been the kind of like not soul, but like the primary emotional support system for several heterosexual men. <laughs> that is fair. And it's like, I'm kind of like, well, you know. <laughs> and so you just get that sense. And and also, I mean, you need some, you need a butler. Like you need someone to run the house. Yeah. And because that's, and that is to get into like a very minor walking dead rant. That is the issue with that is like, it's, Every time there's a nice, good character that you can root for, they are horribly killed by mm-hmm. zombies or other humans. And I'm just like, wh- who am I supposed to be rooting for? In a way that if only communication could have been done better, we would have been. Yeah. yeah. And it's also, it's not that I, it's not that I don't believe that if we were in an apocalyptic situation, there would be people fighting each other and people stealing. But I really have to hope that if we were actually in an apocalyptic scenario, People would want to help each other, you know. I you have. I mean, it would absolutely be a. I I think it would be a mixed bag. Of course, I think the consensus in a general, if, if you could poll everyone, yeah, during the apocalypse, I think more people would be helpful than not. Sure, because this this is seven years after the inciting incident. Yeah, so things have had. He literally give, in the beginning, he's like ninety percent of the population died. Yeah. Like that's where I think a lot of that shit was going down. Sure, okay, and so. I don't know, though. We're, like, eight years into the apocalypse on The Walking Dead, at least. Oh, isn't it weirdly, like, five months or something? Like No, because there even was a time jump in between season one okay. and two. But, <laughs> I was regard- say, but regardless, like, I, I, I get your point. Isn't but it, still. like, 24, yeah. where it's just like, one consecutive? Yeah. That show ran a long time. That's a, I mean. <laughs> so, right away I was in. When, when you have a, a dairy cow named Gertie, mm-hmm. you, I'm in. Yeah. And... I was a little bit annoyed at first with his insistence to go participate because, again, why? Yeah. Why? And I was like, is this masculinity? Like, what are we doing? And the movie does a, a, a pretty – it doesn't really tackle that part head on, but it does a pretty decent job, especially when we get to merging into medium, moderate spoilers. Yeah. But the stuff with his parents. Yeah. That starts to kind of mm-hmm. fill in some blanks. Well, if you um, also – you know, if he was 17 – when it happened, that's like still uh, figuring out who you are as an adult and, you know, figuring out your personality. And if something that traumatic happens, the moment that you like in such a pivotal moment of your development, I think you would not have a desire to overcome it in some way. Sure. I think you, yeah, I think it's like, I think he thinks if he had acted faster, if he hadn't frozen in that moment, he might've been able to save his parents. And I think him trying to help the colony in these moments is him trying to overcome that block that he has, but he's just bad at it at first. <laughs> he just can't at first. Uh, you know, another thing that I really, really appreciated about this was the balance between feeling very familiar and also fresh. Yeah. Like in a lot of ways, these are very standard tropes. Mm-hmm. It, it hits most of the the obvious buttons you think it would. Yeah. Um, but it's the ways in which it, it used them. And the only real subversion of expectations, I guess, has to be the fact that not everyone's cutthroat. Sure. I'm trying to think if there's really any other. There's not a lot of, a lot of subversion with the exception of another spoiler alert, the romance Mm -hmm. kind of subverts the, what you would expect to happen. But I did also like that you're right, that it does hit all these beats because it's like, You know, he's doing this thing and then he like meets up with a couple of people and they're like basically the the tips he gets from Michael Rooker lay out the rest of the movie, Mm -hmm. which I'm just like, I do love that in a sci fi adventure quest thing like this. You just are like, I bet that thing he said is going to come back in handy later. And it definitely does. And it's great. 
So we're <laughs> from here on out. Spoilers. We're spoilers. Get, definitely uh, watch it. It's it's mm-hmm. good. Uh, it, it, the last thing I'll say: there's a adorable dog in this movie. If you're one of these people, does the dog, dog die? die? No, no. <laughs> he does not. That doesn't mean, Anne, that it's not traumatizing. Even still, there are several moments where the dog makes that noise that yeah. you can't handle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> also, uh, Anne, specifically, there is a giant mutated frog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in a swimming pool in this movie. So, so maybe this is not an Anne movie. <laughs> do with that what you will. <laughs> the subversion with the romance. It's actually the first place my mind went. I was like, dude. Mm. You could just hear in her voice that yeah. she likes having him as a pen pal. Sure. Yeah. But he's like, I'm going to go find the 17-year-old love of my life. Yeah. And I'm like, you didn't run that by her, though. Because I literally said to you, I was like, she's going to have a, a boyfriend, yeah. like a significant other. And you kind of were like, no. And I was like, okay. And then when we get there, she does not. Uh, however, she did. she did, and he's recently deceased, yeah. and so she's not. Which that I love. This is the kind of storytelling that I love. It's the kind of storytelling that I gra- gravitate towards yeah. too myself because it's like most people would go either like, "Oh my god, I'm so happy, love for the ages," or like, "What are you doing here?" I yeah. didn't love it. And the fact that the movie ends so open ended that like you really can't. Well, for starters. I want a sequel. I feel like we're not going to get it, but you could keep going. With yeah. Like oh, this. you could absolutely keep going, especially because um, it's the Brian Duffield. It's the same writer that did the babysitter and the babysitter killer queen. So it's like there is a, an underwater. You said, and he I think I'm just a fan. No, I me think too. I like him. Cause underwater almost made my list last year. Mm-hmm. And I, cause I loved it. And it was one of the last movies we saw in theater. And it's another one that's very standard and low stakes, yeah. but it's a good version of what it is. Yeah. Also, Kristen Stewart has that hair in it. Mm-hmm. And it works for me. I like his, I like his sensibilities. He's his got fan, a his sci-fi he's, fantasy sensibilities. Yeah, he's got a good vibe, mm-hmm. screenwriter wise. I dig it. He it's writes, not like ham fisted. It's like, and he writes like his nuanced, women are interesting and nuanced yeah. enough characters across the board that I think are like really, you know, you get enough from even the like, even from Joel's colony, you get enough from them to like get their like their general, personalities didn't stand yeah. out. But I was actually sad. I literally was like. I care so much about these people and I don't know who they are is what my first note Mm -hmm. or my third note says. Uh, Another comparison, if you're trying to gauge this warm bodies, if warm bodies had, uh, and I love warm bodies. This isn't meant as shade, but I feel like if warm bodies had slightly more purpose or like if it was maybe sure more of a sprint. Yeah. Where warm bodies is more cerebral. Yeah. That's fair. (laughs) That's fair. The, Uh, The other day, uh, Jason Adams from my new plaid pants, mm-hmm. which is a blog that we like and follow. He was watching something with zombies, I think from the eighties. And he was like, he was like, here's a fun thing. Who's the hottest zombie from something. And I immediately was like, Nicole from more bodies. <laughs> so yeah, the way, the way that the movie ends and we'll get into some of the more yeah. stuff at the end, but in your mind, you can get them together. Yeah. It, it was just like, just not yet or not then or whatever. And also that like, he realizes it because he also, I, he doesn't get mad at her. It, it, okay. Like, Cause at v- the very first moment towards the end when he, when he's like, can we just like talk for a minute? And he's like, I came all the way here for you. And I was like, Ooh, I was like, pull back. I was like, resist that urge. And they really then did resist the urge because he immediately is like, I'm, I'm sorry. That's not what I meant. I didn't, even... I didn't ask you. I just assumed. And he immediately takes the onus of that back on himself, which I appreciated so much. It it really because it all it like dips its toe in that being like, you owe me this relationship. We could have gone I to an the incel world. place. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And he really didn't, which was amazing. Um, I really I really enjoyed that part too. That he just was like, No, I I definitely get it. Like, it also it was just it was just so refreshing. Seeing a movie that had a story to tell, Mm -hmm. knew what it wanted to say, knew how it wanted to do it, and did that completely, to my perception, unimpeded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This movie had the money it needed to tell its story. Oh, yeah. I did not feel like I was watching a movie on a budget. And furthermore... No, it it didn't feel like an episode of, like, Land of the Lost or something with the monsters. They were pretty good. But furthermore, I did not feel clobbered over the head, which is the place that we were pre-pandemic at with movies. Yeah. Where it's like, 
Oh, I think it was the Ellen DeGeneres. The, we don't need to be eating all we can eat. Yeah. We're not bears. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back again tomorrow to eat the same amount. Yeah. No, 100%. And that's how I feel about movies. 100%. I'm like, we don't – like, there's no reason why the Zack Snyder stuff needs to be 250 and $300 million. Like, but to that point, I would say about the rest of his movies, that the ones that we've seen, Underwater and both Babysitter movies, are very contained and they are very, like – But very stylish. And again, yeah, the, the, mid, it was – mid-budget. They look great. Because what is this, $50 million, $45 million? I don't know. Did it say? So. I feel silly – implying that that's a low budget but compared to 50 million is a pretty low budget movie 30 even better yeah way, 30 million dollars way better and it looks great that's so doable and that's the way hollywood used to work yeah like, i really i really miss the early 2000s sometimes i mean i was going back to like the 80s well like, sure yeah. sure sure i just like i remember i remember being in high school and college and just like going to the movies on the weekend and just like picking something that I like didn't even really know about and just going to see. And so I saw like so many different types of movies just because I was like, Oh, I'll or, see that. Yeah. Or something that we've talked about, you know, frequently we reference the MCU. It's like, yeah. go watch the first Iron Man. Yeah. And then watch Endgame. Mm -hmm. Completely different. Even the first Captain America. Levels. Like, uh, the first, the, like, the first set of like, like phase one is like child's play <laughs> but again I, I mean they have a big fight they've got yeah. tons of special effects and, and things smashing but I'm it's gonna like defend that a little bit because it was a gradual build-up to yeah. it and it's like you you, do, you don't have the space magic starting out and so yeah. it's like you obviously need more when you get there i meant it as a good thing oh okay okay yeah i, I was saying like yeah i was like but but you, you had did to build it right up for it. it's like the batman versus well, superman it, is like so fucking if you stupid. start at in game yeah. then it doesn't make in game special when you get there sure of course it's like you have to build to something. Even if you and... start with like the first Guardians movie, it doesn't mm -hmm. make Endgame special because you're already in the space magic part. It's like you really have to have those human stories first. And I, I really did appreciate I got my monsters. I wanted yeah. monsters from this. Uh, I was a little disappointed, uh, just personal preference, when I found it, the, the premise was actually a, like meteor was heading towards mm -hmm. Earth and they blew it up with nuclear weapons. And then the chemicals rained down and mutated all of the bugs. Cold, the cold-blooded cold -blooded. animals. So I wanted monsters, like Greek mythology. Ah. Like I wanted oh, I chimeras, okay. you know? Okay. <laughs> and so I was a little disappointed when I realized they were all just bugs yeah. and, like, frogs and stuff. I was like, mm. Like, I wanted, like, a fire-breathing lion. <laughs> but, but then we wouldn't have been able to have the dog. Sure. No. Because it affected all oh, of the oh, cold-blooded. Oh, okay, yeah. yes. No, I meant, like, I wanted the movie to have just, like, monsters in it. Sure. I mean, yes, okay. once you get the explanation. And, okay, the si okay, I see what you mean. <laughs> the the science. science of it makes it make sense, but you wanted something different. The dog. Holy shit. It is so, so close to being egregious. It is How so cute it is. And the way he's used. Yeah. The, so his, his name, name is Boy. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> he is the cutest. His he's, breed he's is an, Aust an Australian Kelpie, and he was played by two dogs named Hero and Dodge. And they have little, like, feet. <laughs> the dogs have feet? Their paws are a lighter color than their bodies. And he, like, boy saves Dylan O'Brien? Joel. Joel. <laughs> he says his name so many times. Yeah. A boy saves Joel from the frog and then brings him back to his house where he was living with his owner. And we get this performance from this dog that he was living there with his owner. She died, and the dog has carried on without her. Yeah, but he, but he has her dress. Boy, is that your name? Boy, name's Boy. I'm Joel. Nice to meet you. Thanks. Uh, thanks for saving my life, boy. Is this a dress? Oh, 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 sorry. Okay, I won't touch it again. That he won't let go, he, and he brings it with him, and it's a, it's a major plot point. It really is a major plot point. <laughs> and that is so close to being, like I said, egregious, being like, I'm sorry. This is, this, like, that But goes, it works on the performance of the dog. It does. <laughs> and I'm Dylan. Being, I'm being and Dylan, no, but yeah. I mean, Dylan. <laughs> 
secondary. No, it really is weird. Weirdly is sort of on the back of this dog's performance that that doesn't turn into this like saccharine thing that you're just like, oh God. And you're just like, but the dog is so good. And then we get Michael Rooker, who also, I guess I'm just a stan. I've He's great. Liked... We should watch Mallrats. Oh, yeah. I have not he, seen that. He's in it. It's, it's a good role. He's also not in this movie, but he's also weirdly hot. Oh, yes. Oh, it's, I say things weirdly sometimes. He's also, comma, not in this movie, comma, comma weirdly hot. Weirdly hot, yes. Okay. Uh, but no, he's great. And what is her name? Minnow? Yeah, Minnow, um, the actress's name is Ariana Greenblatt. She was great, too. Baby Gamora. Yeah, she was really great, too. <laughs> Definitely a little on, I mean, we say this almost with most kids, but a little, little on the precocious, precocious side. But that's... But it was, it felt like it was a character choice yeah, and not an purpose. actress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also her hair. <laughs> Better hair than I've ever had in my life, even when I was a little girl. I mean, it, it was like that when she was Gamora, too. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I mean, that was a wig, but... <laughs> Amazing. The way in which this movie used tropes and cliches and shorthand in all the best places. It was to... To it help was, you, like... Yeah, it was to lift the movie like up. Like, it, it, it wasn't a crutch. Right, it, you yeah. You know, it wasn't mm-hmm. depending on it to do the heavy lifting. Yeah. It was using it to get to the mm-hmm. good... The good stuff. Which and I think, also, again, is like a, seems to be a trademark of Brian Duffield. Because it's like the babysitter movies were very tropey, but they were subverting stuff. And they were also like, you know, again, using that, using the tropes and cliches and everything to prop up the, or to lift up the movie instead of like, like you said, leaning on it like a crutch. And I feel the same about Underwater. Yeah. I made my peace with and loved the monsters that we got. And I like the sort of variety like there was a couple of them that we got a really good grasp on Mm -hmm. there was a couple of them that were sort of like in between Mm -hmm. and then there was a couple like the club whatever oh that was like following him Mm -hmm. with his scent yeah where it's like we only got but a glimpse of it it was almost like a mythical figure yeah and the way that that just builds the world Mm -hmm. the way that that just fills where it's like i i don't love fantasy things where they have a grip on like three or four th- solid things, and that's kind of it. Yeah. You're like, is that all that's in this world? Like, I, I mean, to mention Teen Wolf again, you reach a point with, I okay, so I guess they're chimeras, but I always said chimera, so it sounds weird. So if I yeah. pronounce chimera wrong, then it's because I of me. <laughs> but they have chimeras, and it's like conveniently all of the chimeras are just things we've already seen on the show. Sure, yeah. And I was kind of like, I mean, the Wendigo was cool, but like. What if you just randomly pulled out like a fucking I don't know Jersey Devil or like sure, yeah. Chupacabra or do you know what I mean? Yeah, like what 100%. if something random was thrown in there and this does that where it was and, like and so many things like that also lean on the like it's the Wear Panther and it's like I'm sorry I know I call shenanigans on your Wear Panther I can't bullshit. I can't no, no. It's a, that's a whole different thing I would accept Werewolf Panther before I accept <laughs> Wear <Were> Panther. <laughs> And it, it just is, it's like very, because I you you have stated that you might have an issue with if we continue watching Discovery of Witches, because there's only three things. But is there an implication that there's more in the world? No. Uh, see, I don't, I mean, if they do it well, then that's yeah. fine. But that there's something about that that just rings hollow. Although it's a very human drama. Yeah. That's a human mm-hmm. drama. So that I'm I'm better with. It's when that there's like different species, but sure. it's like, but there's only like three. It's like so kind of like Carnival Row. There, kind, were, like, there only of. were like three things in Carnival. Or it's like Row. a world where there's like there's like humans, unicorns, and minotaurs. And I'm like, that's <laughs> what an odd that, combination. That's, that's it. Like, yeah. <laughs> is there like a freshwater nymph? Like, that's where I'm sort <laughs> sure. of. And it's when they're like, no, yeah. When they're kind of like, maybe. Sure. But it's when they're like, no, that I don't get it. I'm yeah. like, this is, it, it feels weird. Yeah. Um, Which this movie did not at yeah. any point. I agree. Oh, God, the effects are so, the fucking millipede was heinous. Oh. Hey, oh. That was also egregious too with the dog. Because there was like, also no reason why the dog would not yeah. get the hell out of Dodge. It was like spiraling around him underneath that ducky. Oh, man. It was, it was a whole. I don't like the legs. And they, they chittered. They made, like, as it's coming out, it made this, like, cicada sound. Not into it. And the legs stop, and the sound stops. <sighs> Just vomit everywhere. It it's like a silverfish. Good. Not good. Oh, not good. Oh, God. Thank God we didn't see a silverfish. Fuck off. Oh, God. Now, silverfish, if you're listening, fuck you! 
Fuck you! You're so gross! Fuck you, Silverfish, you're disgusting! You're gross! I hate you! Dark sided! You're dark sided! You're not Christian! Everything's ungodly! <laughs> dark sided! No, it's real bad. Oh, oh god, I feel it all over me now. <laughs> I pause, I just want to watch that. I feel like little buggy feet all over me. Because we, also him leaving, I, I I had to get over it. I had to just let myself get over that because I'm like, I'm not afraid. To, <laughs> I'm not afraid to die. Okay. You don't want to know. How fast. How, how little, like never overestimate my will to live. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to know how quickly I will check out. If there is any afraid, kind of apocalyptic scenario. I'm afraid of horrible pain. Agony. Yeah. And do you know what inflicts agony? Bugs yeah. on their prey. Yeah. Watch videos of what spiders do to their prey. Ugh. I'm not fucking with that. <laughs> no, yeah, same. <laughs> like, I'm not risking it because I'm a not, girl in high school yeah. gave me a boner. Sure. Like, I'm also, it's like, it goes to the zombie thing, too, where it's like, I'm not trying to be torn apart by human teeth. I would take that <laughs> over. <laughs> over bugs? A bug injecting me, liquefying my insides over a process of days and sucking them out. I mean, I feel like you'd be dead before days. It takes longer than you would think. I've watched a couple of documentaries. Okay, but some of these some of these monsters can eat you in one bite. Sure. That's fine, right? Okay, that's, that's fine. acceptable as long as I'm destroyed. Immediately. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. I'm not, like, suffocating in stomach acid. Sure. <laughs> I mean, obviously. Well, it's the, okay. That's the thing where it's like there are certain there are certain if, deaths in the movie Jaws that I could handle. If you're just eaten immediately by a shark, 100. percent The chick at the beginning, and when Quint gets it, it just because it just gets his legs, and then he's just like, ah! I can't can't do it. But even can't that, do it. it's like yeah, I agree. I agree. Being I agree. eaten alive is yeah. my biggest fear. No, I agree. But that's implied that it's a series of minutes. Okay. The worst minute. I'm not bringing up, I refuse to tell the bear story. That was ours. That Russian bear mm -hmm. story? No, we don't need to talk about the Russian bear story. We don't talk about we don't the talk Russian about bear, the bear story. story. <laughs> that was horrible. That was literally the worst so, thing I've ever yeah, read. I just like, no, it was on the radio. We were in the car. Oh. Or did you read it? I read an article. Told, about, told me about I it. I read an car. article. Okay. Yeah. Um, because it described in excruciating detail the phone call to the okay, girl's okay, mother. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> We've lost control. <laughs> We've lost control of the ship. I'm not even drinking tonight. I mean, I just started, yeah. but this is the difference. This is what happens when I genuinely care yeah. about what's happening. Mm -hmm. I loved I mean, I was going to try and do a bit and pretend I didn't like it, but that no. wouldn't have worked. I also because... wouldn't have believed you because I heard you laughing. And That's what I mean. You could tell, it. like, watch I was kind of giddy watching yeah. it because I just loved it so much. Mm -hmm. Just the sensibilities, like, oh, God, God. It's also weirdly poignant mm -hmm. in ways it has no right to be are you going to talk about the main the mavis yeah yeah and not just because it's like warm bodies is again i love warm bodies mm -hmm. this is not meant to be shade or comparison or slander or whatever but warm bodies is poignant in like one way yeah this is poignant in like three or four ways yeah because you're right it is like actually the his relationship with boy gets very sincere and Intense is a weird word, but it gets very sincere and a very like well, you his know, relationship with his colony, his colony, then Michael Rooker and Minnow, yeah, the dog uh, survival, Amy, yeah, what it means to like. But then, in the midst of all of this, he has this beautiful, poignant, emotional moment with a robot named Mavis. <laughs> yeah, look over there. Take a picture of our Mavis. We have a. Her name is literally Mavis. We have a Mavis. I don't think you can see her. No, we'll take a picture of Mavis. And I, that moment is, I mean, obviously some of it it's, is helped by the Stand By Me. It's one of my favorite songs. But, but no, but even before that song, even it was like, that song. it's stunning. Yeah. Mavis's performance. Yeah. Because uh, I'm assuming there's an actor Did somewhere in there. Did you steal food? <laughs> Will and I were losing our shit. Every time somebody was like, oh, did you steal? Why aren't you with your colony? Did you steal food? And he just is like, no, man, I didn't but steal even, food. No, but, okay, but even that implies that in this reality, that's the the gravest crime. That is the commit. worst crime, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it it is world building as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but the conversation with Mavis, I'll see if we can pull a, Some a of sample it. of sure, it. Sure, yeah. 
Would you like to see a trick, Joel? Sure. What is your full name? And where were you born? Uh, Joel Dawson, Fairfield, California. Whoa. What lovely parents you had, Joel. Oh my god. Wow. I don't even have a picture. What would you say to your mother now, Joel, if you had the chance? Because I tell her I'm okay. made it to a colony. Met a lot of really, really good people who took really good care of me. Who, like, actually, I want to see. Because someone had to play. Uh, somebody did. I don't remember. Oh, the same. Her name is Melanie Zanetti. She also played one of his um, colony mates. She was stunning. Yeah. Her performance was, was, Very it was good. gorgeous. In the middle of this movie, there's just this, this, um, it's not ambiguous, but this sort of, the opposite of heavy-handed, this very sort of light. Oh yeah, this light exploration Ethereal kind of. of what it means to be human. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and literally because we know we meet Mavis and we know <laughs> that she has fifteen minutes to live. Yeah, and then she was like, "What can I help you with?" And he was like, "Unless you got a battery, I'm out of luck." And she was like, "I would be glad to give you my life if you need it." Yeah, and it. She basically so she <laughs> she has like an hour left at the beginning, and then she gives him like 40 minutes of her mm -hmm. remaining life from her battery so that he can contact Amy. It's very good. And it's very sweet. And then she asks him to take her outside. Yeah. And the sky jellies, whatever the fuck that is. I don't care. Yeah, I love it. Same. I don't care either. While she plays stand by me until she dies. Yeah. And then he buries her. He really did bury her. He made her a little headstone and everything. With a face. He like drew a face on it for mm -hmm. her. It was, I, I, I loved this movie. Yeah, it's like, great. It, I think this was Will's favorite movie of last year. You've said that about like three or four things. No, I think I think sincerely this Ultimately. was it because he he liked it a lot. When we watched it, he was like, "This is the best movie I've seen this year," and that's not saying a lot because we didn't watch a lot of new stuff last year because the theaters were closed. But I, he really, really liked it like a lot. The balance of the tones, the way that it like it didn't feel too big for its britches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At so many places cuz we haven't even gotten into like the slavery part of it where so there's like not human slavery. Uh, oh, the the crab. Yeah, okay. Uh, I was like what on earth are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what did I miss? <laughs> <laughs> so he gets he gets to Amy's colony. Amy with one eye and two E's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mavis keeps saying that. It's very cute. He gets to her colony. And so, okay, I had a note where I, this is where I wrote down my I love that everyone's just kind of chill. Mm -hmm. And so I did write this down once we met the captain. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I did also clock that Joel reacted strangely to it every time she said like oh people came here and they're gonna take us away and he was like huh yeah and i said that too i was like where and when you see the yacht you're like i mean that's amazing but also that yacht wasn't that big yeah it did strike me as odd i accepted that everything was fine however we get the reveal that they are in fact pirates yeah. which uh, but even that i do appreciate that the world acknowledged that there is evil yeah i mean that there is there are food evil. stealers <laughs> that's true because i for yeah no they weren't killing them or anything they weren't using they yeah were they, they were leave them. yeah they yeah. were literally yeah god yeah but anyways the slavery they had enslaved a crap because that's the other thing when he was like in the ocean we'll be safe and i was like based on what i'm like you're not even safe in the ocean now at first, like, <laughs> yeah, at first i was like i mean i i get it it's I like believe sure that. i was like you know you're not with all the land ones but i was like there's like a fuck ton of cold-blooded animals in the ocean so that's what I mean, that are dangerous now yeah let yeah. alone <laughs> yeah because um, that, that was the thing when we watched it the first time i thought it was gonna be they were gonna have trapped like a squid mm -hmm. but the a kraken the, yeah the fact that it is a crab obviously works better because it can get on land at like as it has to to have the climax of this movie well because you were like you were like it's a crabby which was a running joke for us and i started to be like that is not a crabby <laughs> and it like fights and stuff like that, blah blah blah. Yeah. And then the twist is that it's a Daniel in the lion's den. Yeah, it's because we. So that's another thing that Michael Rooker lampshades earlier, where he's like, 
you can always tell if they're like friendly by their eyes because they have more humanoid eyes the ones that are like okay and because it was like a snail the rock snail i was like they even there was even a precedent Mm -hmm. for that because i loved the rock snail yeah okay now i knew it On your way now. On your way. What you so scared for? But all the snails are nice. There can be nice ones? You can always tell them their eyes. Just look at their eyes. This one probably saved our lives, too. Thank you, Mr. Boulder Snail. Thank you, Mr. Boulder Snail. Uh, yeah. They're very sensitive, you know. Mm-hmm. It I was a it. giant snail with a rock. And it was cool. Uh so the captain, the Australian captain, is like electrocuting the crab to make it do stuff. It's bad, and and I was fine to just ignore it. Like that that, that dawned on me where I was like, "Well, this is mean." But yeah. then I was like, "Well, I mean, it's love and monsters. All sure. is fair in love and monsters." But then he hits a girl. Yeah, he like fucking the crab. No, no. Oh, the captain. He yeah, like, no. I meant the. I was fine yeah. for them to kill the crab. Whatever. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Uh, and then. Joel realizes when he sees in its eyes that it actually doesn't want to do that. They're hurting it. Yeah. And so it frees. He he frees it. Mm-hmm. And then it leaves and kills them. And yeah. that was very satisfying. The fucking bitch. Yeah. Hers was the... I hated her the most. <laughs> With her fucking arm gun. Yeah. She tried to shoot the dog. She did try to shoot the dog. <laughs> I mean, he told her to, but she still did it. Well, you were worried. You were worried that he wasn't looking for the dog, too. Yeah, I didn't love... I mean, at a certain point, a, a movie he, is... He yelled at it. Even that, I well, the dog fucking. The dog deserved it a little. There's another stunning scene with the queen worm, whatever it's called, sand Mm, worm or whatever, mm -hmm. and she comes around and he's very, very smartly hiding in like a tree, a tree like trunk. Yeah, but it's like the roots because we established that she comes up from under you and eats you, Mm -hmm. and if there's a massive root system, she's not gonna do that. And I was like, that's brilliant. And it's it's a very standard scene that we've seen in all kinds of movies, Alien, Lord of the Rings, what have you, where she's, like, coming around the bin and he's mm-hmm. hiding. But the way he's, like, holding the dog, and his he's, performance yeah. with the dog, mm-hmm. Dylan is so good. So, okay, here's the thing, too, is he was, like, the only one who was authorized to work with the dogs. So it's, like, whenever he was on set with the dogs, nobody else could be on set because... He, it would distract them. Mm. And then whenever the dogs were, cause like, um, Minnow has a couple of scenes where she like is petting the dog, but he couldn't be on set when she had the scene with the dog. Is that why the performance was so good? Maybe. <laughs> I mean, we quite literally yeah. were like, this was such a great performance yeah. from this animal. It was like, I think it was to keep it very contained, but it was like, keep it very focused. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, but I thought it was like, that's really, that's fascinating. Really interesting. Uh, cause that scene was just so, so, so like, primal yeah and and then the dress boy's owner's dress gets like blown into the, into little the stream river, yeah. and he like bolts and joel like runs after him and well no he saves himself whatever he yells at him and he deserved it boy deserved to get yelled at for that well it's also but... it's like they get to it's because they he he explodes the sandworm and then they get oh, to, god it was yeah. this so good they get, get to the it. other side of the river and then he is like covered in you know leeches psychedelic leeches yeah really yucky mutant so if you're leeches. going to be killed by mutant bugs psychedelics, psychedelics feel sure, like they would sure. ease the... lick one of those poison dart frogs and just <laughs> just End it there. Yeah. Uh, no, it, it, I, I just didn't like that. I mean, I understand, like, again, it's a movie and I understand what I saw and all that, but I just didn't like that. Like, once he got to Amy, he was like, oh, well, like, it was like the dog didn't even dawn on him. And then the dog just sort of came running back. Yeah. I was like, how did the dog get in here? <laughs> I mean, it just was like, I, I don't think, know. It was opening and shutting yeah. bus doors. So it was a pretty. <laughs> it also seemed like they like that was a house like built into the mountainside. So there's got to be. a. Well, door. that was my other issue where I was like, why are they leaving this place? This seems ideal. I think the point mostly was that it is just Amy caring for all of these elderly well, so people. Needing other people. That, yeah. So that's where I thought Joel's colony was going to come join them. Oh, I see. Because with the sea, you have you have food and water. Yeah. So, well, you I mean, don't really have water. Yeah, you do because they're set up with sophisticated enough that if you can boil oh, water, oh, sure, 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 you can boil fresh water or salt water. Sure, and get, if you have like a distillation and the, thing, yeah. there's ways they had enough equipment to do that. Sure, 
So they have the like access, like I said, access to water, food, and also waste. Yeah. Like that felt ideal, and it was big. I wanted to know what it is because there was a lot of really weird flourishes. Part of me was waiting for it to be like Disneyland or something. No, I, it, it really it felt... It could have just been a boardwalk. It like. sort of felt like a megalomaniac's house that was, like, uh-huh. carved into a mountain. <laughs> there was, like, a conversation pit. Uh-huh. It felt like a 70s Well, they had seven years to, to yeah. do That's stuff. That's true, too, yeah. Because there were mansions around, mm-hmm. but... I'm I'm I, I feel like such a nerd that I'm geeking out so hard about this. That was great. It was this movie's there great. Was, and, and, and from top to bottom, I mean, like I just said, the the we just talked about the pit, and yeah. we, we came up with two theories right there as to what <laughs> what it could have been. Sure. So I mean, he he saves them. He makes his peace with Amy, and he goes home yeah. to his family, which is right. Which so he, that which so he that should they have. can go to the mountains. That's the plan, and the implication is that Amy and her colony are also going to go to the mountains. Yep. I'm very worried. I'm very concerned for Gertie. Gertie. I don't believe that she would make that trek. I also think she's very – well, with all the warriors, maybe. Um, yeah, it could be. It could, and now, now they have an extra warrior because mm-hmm. Joel is really good at his job now. And and the, also he learned a lot. Yeah. Because they were really in a place of ignorance. Mm-hmm. And this is why – Something like The Walking Dead would be intriguing because you have to imagine that you would reach a place somewhere, like certain places would be more developed than others. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'd cause... have to imagine. <laughs> so I watched a video. It, it was about this. Like what would happen if there was a cataclysm? Sure. And a, a scientist was actually breaking it down. And he was like, there would be a handful of places in the world like Monaco that would fortify mm-hmm. and they would still be very functioning, sure. like very highly functioning. I believe that. And he was like, and then there would be people in the middle of nowhere that would have no concept that society still exists. Yes. And I was like, interesting. And so that's kind of what I was thinking. Or even what was that show Legion that came on um, sci-fi? That show was kind of good. Well, it was a, it was a, a fantastic premise, yeah. but because it made sense that mm-hmm. it was like they built this massive compound in Las Vegas. And yeah. I was like, Oh, that makes so much sense. You have the means and ability to feed large amounts of people. Yep. You have room. You have like, I mean, with with all the the show business, the theatrics of it all. I mean, you have large kitchens in the middle. Sure. Of, like, okay. Yeah. Because I was like, you'd have to terraform something. <laughs> They're course. not growing food in Las Vegas. <laughs> no, of course. But I'm just saying, it's sort of designed for that. Yeah. Like everybody gets their own little room, and yeah, definitely. Uh, the chandelier was a nice little nod, mm-hmm. and they didn't clobber us over the head with it. Yeah. He doesn't have this, like, poignant thing where it's like, the chandelier is the only thing I have left of my mother. Yeah. He just has it with him. Well, and you're also, you get the information in backwards order. Because I laughed because I was like, why is she saving the chandelier? Yeah. And then later you see the car crash. Mm-hmm. And he's getting out and she just hands him the chandelier. Yeah. And then they're, like, immediately killed. Smushed. And then in the next scene we realize he just has it hanging in his room. Yeah. And I was like... Oh, and that, that's also something that I did appreciate. And again, I don't think Walking Dead touched on it, actually, because my favorite character in The Walking Dead, Amy. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> she made it like three solid episodes. Uh, but the reason why I decided I liked her is because her sister Lori, the, they got in the trouble they got in because Lori was trying to steal a mermaid necklace for yeah. her because she liked mermaids. Yeah. You are consistent. <laughs> I am nothing if not. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they... um. It, Mad Max Fury Road, they talked about how in a post-apocalyptic mm. world, we actually would really cling to things that reminded us of beauty yeah. and the world before. I do and think, like, I to me, the the chandelier is a little, a, not quite so intense as that. I think it just was like, you're grabbing just... But my, my point is something yeah. like that could mean, or the dress. I think it took on more meaning after, sh- after the mother died. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like... It wasn't like Joel's favorite chandelier. I need to remember chandelier. the beauty of the yeah. world before. <laughs> he just stumbles upon Cassie's mom's house from Promising oh, Young God. Woman. <laughs> Modern Rococo. I know I'm going to watch it again and I'm probably going to have things to yeah. add. But I th- this is going into my special, my special pile. Yes. So I also really liked it and I thought it was cute. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay, so Love and Monsters is available for rent or purchase on Amazon, at least. I'm sure you can buy it elsewhere. So yeah, we definitely recommend that you watch this movie. It's very good. If you like Dylan O'Brien, if you like Monsters, if you like all kinds of stuff, it's awesome. Um, you can follow us on Twitter, at So I'm Watching, or Instagram, at So I'm Watching This Show. 
You can also follow along on our website, soimwatching.com, which links out to everything, including the YouTube, where we would love for you to subscribe, and anywhere else that you listen to podcasts. And if you could give us a rating, that would be sweet. Bye!